Hello, friends, welcome back. Ah, we're back here, the Elden Ring. Throwing our hat into the Elden Ring. I'm just going to get right into it because uh, if people are here, they're here. If they're not, then they'll maybe show up. Maybe they won't. We'll see. Just finished your spaghetti carbonara. Very nice. Very nice. So, I need to... I finally finished the, the DLC with Bare Fist Steve. He finished at level 200 after the final boss fight. And oh boy. Oh, that was a thing. That was certainly a thing. But now, we are back to Amogus... And the ancient meteoric or great sword, or the quest for it. Here, my chair lies in ruins. And yeah, we're going to be doing a bunch of stuff today. I have a couple of notes that I was going to take. Um, I'm picking up where we left off. I did not do any more off camera stuff this time around. The goal, I think, is going to be to get to um, Mogwin Palace just to start leveling up and stuff. There are a couple of things I want to do first. Um, I need to get hold of the Lion's Claw Ash of War if we want to use that for the Great Sword because it's a really good Ash of War for the Great Sword or any colossal weapon, really. Uh, we're going to do some of Rani's questline just so it triggers some of the starting events for Radan. Um, I'm fairly certain we already met Alexander, so we can also do Gale Tunnel and maybe Ravine Veiled Village for some more upgrade materials. And we're going to fight Radan today. That's going to be our Shard Bearer fight. We already have the Grand Dectus Medallion, so we can start... Um, uh, what's his name's whole thing? Um, Vare's quest. And then we go and beat the Beast Claw guy, and then we uh, get access to Mogwin. That's the idea. How's everyone doing? If you're playing Elden Ring yourself, how are you enjoying it? Are you getting up to much in the DLC? I now know everything that happens in the DLC, so we can talk spoilers if people want to talk spoilers. Just bear in mind that there are other folks in the chat who may not have finished everything, so maybe keep it to a minimum. But good lord, good lord that final boss fight was uh, a tricky one, let me tell you. I'm looking forward to dragging Zloy XP through a lot of it. <laughs> That's going to be fun. When we get into our next seamless co-op run. I don't even have like a offhand thing here, do I? No, I don't. Makes sense. The ring has become more Elden, amazingly, somehow. We get to say hi to EG. Oh yeah, that's the other thing. I haven't... Let's briefly backtrack to the Mistwood because I haven't met Blythe. I got the uh, the gesture to meet Blythe, but I haven't actually gone there and met him and done the Darrowil quest. And that's something I want to do because I want to get the Carrion Filigree Talisman. Because I'm pretty sure that one gives you, like, a reduction in skill FP and the skill on the Meteoric or Greatsword is apparently worth using. Had to run to the shops. Anything noteworthy happened since you were talking to Whip in Minecraft? Uh, nope, I've gone and got myself a cup of tea, which is noteworthy to me, but probably not to anyone else. I got my partner a cup of tea as well. But uh, yeah, we, uh, we, we exchanged some materials. I will be back on the Fantasy Minecraft SMP on uh, Thursday's stream, probably. And yeah, it's a lot of fun. I'm enjoying it. What kind of tea? Uh, just black tea. Just usual uh, English breakfast tea. That's what I normally make. I get Yorkshire tea if we're talking brands. Um, let's do the thing real fast. Uh, where is Finger Snap these days? He did give me Finger Snap, right? Did he not? Did I not go and talk to Kale? Maybe I haven't spoken to Kale yet. I wish there was a Sight of Grace right there in the Mistwood. I passed over it, did I? Goodbye for now. Am I just not paying any attention? Jump for joy, strength, warm welcome, beck and finger... Okay, now I have it on my gestures, so... Let's get a Fort Height and go north. Yeah, I just wasn't paying a whole lot of attention for some reason. Like, it doesn't look 
right to me. Also, I feel like I never ride around this area, and that's because it just gets destroyed later. <laughs> so in my brain, I'm already like, we don't need to worry about that part of the Mistwood. The other uh, finger snap gesture isn't so, isn't sassy enough. There we go. And for once, I have a larger sword than he does, but barely. Who goes there? Carly sent you, didn't hmm. The name's Blood. He fled somewhere. Come tell me. I can offer you. All right. Uh, let's go fight Darrowell. Should be fun with this great sword. I'm still not quite used to the colossal weapon move set yet, so we'll have to spend a little bit of time reacquainting ourselves with this. But the Darrowell fight is a good enough one to do that with. Yeah, just the sheer amount of items in the Fantasy Minecraft mod pack has. Uh left me confused whenever I look at a collection of icons on a screen, I think. <laughs> Alright, we'll summon Blythe for this because it's always fun just jumping this guy. Make sure I'm two-handing. rotting in a search no justice. No. This is where it ends for you. I think, by the way, I left my character's voice on, uh... Pillar, thank you so much for the raid! Welcome in! I think I left my character's voice on Aged, even when I changed their age back from old to just mature. So, uh, I think my character sounds like an old man. Uh, we don't have the Ancient Meteoric Oil Sword already, but I have the Great Sword that you can get from Kaelid, and I'm using this as, like, the substitute for the Meteoric Oil Sword until we have it. Alright, he gives us a Somber Stone, which is very kind of him. I've already got a few, but I should... I should get more anyway. Let's go back to Leonia. We'll grab the map from up here. Yeah, the, uh, we have to get to the DLC to get the Ancient Meteoric or Greatsword, so we'll probably have to spend at least another stream just getting to the DLC, because I will need to fight Moog. And I'm not good at fighting Moog, because I've not done it very often. Then again, this sword does a heap of damage, and I'm not really, like, super high level with it yet, so... I expect once we get to Moog, we'll be doing a metric ton more, and that should be okay. Let's go say hi to E.G. Well, I presume. Oh, I am an old so here I am He's also making my sword, so... He's going to tell us about Carrier Manor, which is where we're going next. And then say Blythe sent him. And then if we have a few more runes, which I should have enough for, we can buy it. I need one more. Don't have much use for runes currently because my... Uh, There we go. My current level up amount is something like 10,000. Just got to zigzag a little bit, you know? And then rest of the grace. 
Yeah, sorry, I'm giving you the, uh, the horse butt view. You're traveling for the last Elder Ring stream, so you missed the start of this playthrough? Yeah, the start of this playthrough happened much the same as most others. We fought Margit. Um, we're going to avoid all of the uh, finger creepers in here, if we possibly can. Um, but yeah, in terms of like major bosses and stuff, we haven't done a huge amount yet because I'm mostly just getting to the shard bearers. I could have gone and fought Godric already, but I don't think I want to fight Godric right away. I mostly fought Margit for the talisman pouch. I would like to just fight Mogan Radan if I possibly can. I hate this place. There we go. Okay, we're in. <laughs> Just about managed to avoid that guy. We'll grab this. I forget. There's an item over here that might be a somber smithing stone. Or it might be a stone sword key or something. I forget exactly what it is. There we go. Smithing stone. Just a regular one. What's the difference between holding a weapon with both hands to holding it in one hand? Uh, so some weapons have high strength requirements. And if you hold them in both hands, it only requires two-thirds of the strength stat that it suggests you have. Um, so you can use it to use strength weapons before you have the stats to be able to wield them, technically. Um... The other thing is it does, I forget how much, but like a little bit more damage. So, uh, yeah, I think it does like maybe 10 or 15% more damage or something like that. So a lot of the time if you're just attacking with a sword and you're not using a shield, you can block with this, which is somewhat effective. Um... Yeah, like, it's it's usually better to two-hand stuff. It changes the move set as well with some weapons. Like, some weapons are uh, a little bit more effective that way, but it does change the way that they play. And in some cases, two-handing certain weapons can lead to you wielding a pair of weapons. As in the case of the uh, fist weapons and the ornamental straight sword and things like that, where effectively it gives you two of them if you if you two hand. Sword so massive you could probably hide behind it quite easily. Yes, that's what I intend to do for a lot of this. Going to just go around this way because it's slightly easier. We get the drop on the pages again. I think I mostly, when I get enough XP to level up, enough uh, runes to level up, I need to focus on leveling endurance. Because this thing takes a lot of stamina to swing, I imagine the other great sword will as well. And I also need to be able to wield it and ideally have enough stamina to keep swinging it. <laughs> I've not really done an endurance heavy build in the past, so I'm kind of curious to see how this will go. But for now, we just need to worry about fighting Loretta. Which should go okay, as long as I'm not overly greedy. There we go. Go 
Gonna let the stamina build back up. Make sure we heal. Ow. And that bow has a surprising... area of effect. <laughs> we got another horse butt pose there. Alright, this fight should be over in a sec. There we go. Not bad. A little sloppy, but we'll take it. And that's exactly 10k, so that should hopefully get us another level. Oh, so close. I think I maybe have one more rune I can use. Yeah, this is basically my practice sword. <laughs> and the uh, Meteoric or Greatsword has a unique weapon skill, so I'm looking forward to using that. But yeah, basically I'll need to level strength primarily, put a few points into arcane, and then the rest can be endurance and vigor. Right, so let's go say hi to Rani. Talking to Rani will effectively begin the whole Radan thing. Sword is even bigger than the one you wield in Lies of P. I assume that's what you... Uh, you wrote it did a, a weird Twitch emote thing for me. As usual, we're going to skip around a doula. Don't really feel like fighting the dragon if it's just going to run away. Destroy all of Rani's possessions, but that's fine. She has no need of them anyway. Get the grace. So the other thing we need to do before we get too far ahead of ourselves is Yura's quest. Um, fight Bloody Finger Narius, um, Raven Mount Assassin, and then talk to him enough that he triggers the Eleonora fight when we go to Altus, because we will need the Purifying Crystal tier for the Moog fight. That's the other thing I need to remember. Oh, I believe it pleases Matani. I have no... No intrigue. Mm. Wilt thou end? I am the wit that I might want. Well, I see thou art end. I require. I anticipate. Good. There is. It. I would have thee. I have called. Ah. He. And brave Sir Dragon runs away. Pretty much. Spell needs it. All right. Oh. <laughs> Just don't want it to jitter when I'm about to run off the edge and it drop my inputs. Down we go. We're going to have a quick Skype call with Blythe and EG. Hey, bud. Again, Akarian land told thy will. My never I for who for kill let us give together. All right, no worries. Thanks for the sword. <laughs> He's like, long time. I'm like, it was five minutes ago, sir. Five minutes ago. Go say hi to Selvis. I don't know if we'll need to talk to Selvis this time around. I forget if the magic scorpion charm is actually going to be worth having. Nightmare, what's up? I am doing very well today, thank you. Just had a really great stream on the fantasy Minecraft SMP that Mythical Sausage started. It's a lot of fun. It's fun just to have new stuff to do in Minecraft, of course. But uh, I recorded a bit more of Minecraft Survival Guide earlier, and yes, I am really enjoying Elden Ring. I finished the DLC last night and uh, with my Bare Fist Steve character, which was Spiked Cestus, Focus, and... Um, the uh, 
mimic tier was very helpful, let's put it that way. Modded sausage does look like fun. Oh, it's fun. It's very fun. Okay, now we've got that map. We're going to go do Gale Tunnel. Xeon, thanks so much for the six months. Really appreciate it. Thank you. Um, yeah, Gale Tunnel is over this way, I believe. Yeah. So this is mainly for smithing stones, for upgrade materials, for the uh, the greatsword. Occasional somber smithing stones, just so we don't have to buy those, since we're on like a, a longer run here and not a speed run. Nice. And now this is one of the few things that we actually have to roll off because there's no elevator. <laughs> There's another Somber 2. We've got so many of those now. And then we have to let Alexander through here. We could go and do bits of Shifra River as well. Just to kind of continue Blythe's whole quest line. Once again, this sword is not going to be great against these guys because... Unless we just use it to break their poise, it doesn't do strike damage. It's not going to be very effective. The charged R2 on this thing is wicked, though. It does, like, twice as much damage as a regular attack does. Like, even a jump attack. Probably pretty good poise damage against these things, too. instant stagger with that. <laughs> Unbelievable, dude. I don't think I've ever had a weapon in this game that you could just keep an enemy persistently stun-locked. Even one that's got like a glass jaw like those things do. That's awesome. More smithing fours. This is all just to upgrade the great swords. And the somber smithing stones will upgrade the meteoric greatsword when we get it. Why does it remind you of an Elder Guardian? I mean, it's kind of sea creature coded, I guess. The miners only really get mad at you if you either attack them first or they... Or you, uh, you take the, uh, the material that they are mining themselves. So most of them should not really be too concerned if I take the smithing stones. Yeah, cool. As long as I don't take the cracked crystals or whatever it is they're mining there. They do a heck of a lot of damage, though. Definitely got to get used to using regular R1 attacks here. Huh. <laughs> 
And he's dead now. A grace mimic. And here is Alexander. Oh, the esteemed warrior. This was supposed to be a dead end. What's going on here? Well, gosh. <laughs> It's a truncated version of that conversation, but basically the same vibe. So as far as uh, what we need for upgrading the great swords, we've now got seven smithing stone fours. That should be... Wait, is this only plus five right now? Gosh, it's powerful for plus five. Um, I can't... I can't foresee us needing any more than that. I'm pretty sure we get some more Smithing Stone Falls in Ravine Vale Village. So let's head up there. We'll go from here. I think that's probably the closest grace we have. You try the three Jar Knights, they all one-hit my dual colossal character? Yeah, you attack real slow, huh? Was that offline or online? Because I think I mentioned this to you on Discord already, but I definitely uh, go to offline mode for that if I want the fight to be a little bit easier and not everybody's like OP one-shot builds. Everyone's like Moonveil spammy builds get thrown in there. <laughs> I'm like, why did you have to hug fear with a... ridiculous min-maxed build. Got one attack in, then dead. I pretty much just jump attack when I fight those guys, but I've never fought with a Colossal before, and they just it just takes so much stamina, right? But, like, a lot of them don't have attacks that really catch you in mid-air. Or they have to time it super well if they do. I can't imagine it now though with like the DLC characters. You, you come up against people who've got like the fingerprint shield and stuff. <laughs> fingerprint shield, verdigree armor. Out there to give you a real hard time. I don't have the lantern yet either. I should maybe get the lantern at some stage. Can't really spare the runes right now, though. So this dark section here won't last for too long. It's just a little dark around here. I might as well uh, put that on since I do have a useful weapon skill on this and... I don't have any other talismans yet. I got some ideas for what I would want, but... Not gonna worry about those just now. Smithing Stone 5, very good. So it's 4s and 5s here, 5s and 6s in Celia Crystal Tunnel. And then we just need money from that point. Maybe I shouldn't have leveled up that last time. Whole game is designed to give you a real hard time, <laughs> yeah. Especially when it makes players fight other players. Fortunately, I think this weapon will be pretty good at handling the um, Volga Militia. That's another four. Great. Okay, perfect. That's what I want. We go up there in a sec, but we need that first. can see the appeal, the satisfaction of winning must be massive. Oh yeah. 
The satisfaction of beating the DLC boss, like the final boss, yesterday was immeasurable. The thing about this game is that it's not great at giving you, like, a reward other than that for, like, achieving the sort of more ridiculous goals. You're sort of intended to see the experience as its own reward and also maybe enjoy another weapon. But so often with some of these bigger weapons... When you get them later in the game, it's like... I basically have to commit myself to playing New Game Plus with this, otherwise... You've given me a weapon and I have nothing left to use it on, you know? It's like in other fantasy RPGs, like Final Fantasy games or whatever, when you get the best weapon in the game in the last five minutes of the game. And I feel like games in those days didn't even have a new game plus very often, so... Mostly just want to make sure I don't get, like, ambushed by this guy in a second. Because that guy... is definitely going to try and attack me. This guy I have no quarrel with. This guy's fine. Ignore that guy. We'll get this. Grab the rune arc from up here. And we'll definitely get the uh, somber smithing stone on the way out. Nice. And then this way to rest. Nice. Once again, Mr. Lot, how's the run going? It's going well. We're just... Uh, Trying to collect some smithing stones so we can do a bunch of upgrading before Radan. Then we're going to go and fight Radan and then make our way to Mogwin Palace. That's the goal for this stream. If we get anything else accomplished, then great. If not, no worries. Bye. <laughs> the most spectacular way of dealing with that guy. And the upward cut is a really fun move for dealing with flying enemies. When it lands. And the rest of the time just use like standard R1s, I guess. And we've got one more smithing stone behind here. I think we've got a Somber down here, which I'll grab, because I think that's the next level. I have finished the DLC now as well, yes. I beat uh, the final boss with my ridiculous Barefist Steve build and the Mimic tier. Purely to give him another target, because... Ouch. Batman never had a chance. Twitch didn't notify you? Yeah, I think it does that sometimes when I do two streams in a row. Because I end my Minecraft stream and then I start this one close enough later that at the end of that I still only get one stream summary. And it's usually got the title of the Minecraft stream. 
so I feel like it doesn't always, like, if I, if I stream twice in quick succession, it doesn't always generate the same amount of, like, notifications and stuff. It's like I just took a break, you know? Alright, time to do another upward cut. That's right! Again, absolutely love that skill for dealing with these enemies. Tough build for it? Yeah, yeah, it was... It took way too many attempts, like, probably in the hundreds. I wouldn't say upwards of, like, 150 or something, but, like, I did... I didn't bother counting because I knew it was just going to be a real hard time. But, like, I'd got that far on that build, so I didn't want to uh, completely respec and do, like, an overly tanky build. I know a lot of people were talking about, like, Anspur Rapier and Poke and Hide Behind a Shield or whatever. Fingerprint Shield is kind of in the meta right now. I considered even armoring up for a while because I wanted to survive the second phase a little bit longer, but... It didn't really help. And, uh... After a while, I just got into the habit of, like... Summoning Mimic Tear as soon as I could. So, obviously, after, like, the first attack and stuff. Then... I just ended up... Trying to get jump attacks as much as possible to... Get a stance break really early in Phase 2. And then try and, like, get the visceral attack and just lay into him after that. How do I rate the difficulty of the DLC compared to the main game? Dude, it's tough. But I think it's also tough because I'm so used to the main game now that just having new stuff to fight is automatically tough because I don't know all of the patterns anywhere near as closely as I know how all of the stuff in this game fights. So, like, I'm familiar enough with the base game that I think it's... I was going to say naturally easier, but then this thing killed me. Um, yeah, I, th I think that the base game is... All of the, the rote memorization and stuff has been done. <laughs> Yeah, honestly, Uloncle, there were so many, like, of the later attacks in Phase 2. Like, the longer combos and some of the kind of after-image attacks that he does that I just, I just never bothered learning to dodge. I just, I did panic roll my way through a lot of them. I don't even know where that guy went. He's just gone now. <laughs> We upward cut him out of existence. I had 8,000 runes. I would like them back. So try not to get killed by the small guys here. Got so fed up with the final DLC boss I used a pre-patch rolling sparks and called it a day. The um, funniest thing was I beat him on the latest patch and a bunch of people were swearing by it like a certain Ash of War. Like, not a certain Ash of War, a certain um, Spirit Ash. Like, um, I think Taylu the Golem Smith. And they said basically like the, ma the, the final boss just like can't touch him. Like he's really tanky and whatnot. And then in the latest patch, they increased the poise of a bunch of summons, but then they also seemingly bugged the game so that the revered spirit Ash doesn't, um, doesn't help them anymore. Like, Mimic Tear seems to be the only one that's still affected by you going around and getting the, uh, the revered spirit Ash items. 
That's unbelievable, dude. I love that so much. <laughs> the fact that the bat just disappears is amazing. But yeah, like, um, apparently all other summons are currently not affected by the health boost and damage reduction they're supposed to get from Revered Spirit Ash. So, like, I, I summoned the Golem Smith one, he just, like, got stomped immediately. I think he, he took... He was decently tanky against regular damage, but then um, the meteor attack just totals him. Well, poison now. Not to worry. That's right. Keep singing. Smithing stone three, of course. Thank you. See, that wasn't too bad. Another rune arc. Item ahead. Oh yeah, lost ashes. Nice. I'm going to get the grace up here and then we're going to not fight magma worm. Feels like you have a, more of a hammer than a sword sometimes because of the knockback, right? Yeah. Hey, Polsky, welcome in. Okay, so now we have all the smithing stone fours we could want. Um, we can do Celia Crystal Tunnel, I guess, but we'll we'll stop by Yura and we'll do Bloody Finger Narius quickly first. I think we've already met Yura, in fact. But I don't think you even need to meet him in order for the uh, the Nereus fight to trigger, so... Let's just go do that quickly. Not looking forward to this guy rolling away from all of my attacks, but we haven't really done much NPC invasion combat with this build yet. I say build, it's a sword and the hero armor. <laughs> it's not much of a build, but it'll do. Put an iron sword and enchanting table. It got sweeping edge three, looting three, knockback, fire aspect, and bane of arthropods five. <laughs> well, it's a good uh, spider farm sword. If you want to get a uh, trial chamber spider farm going. Or, um, you know, abandoned mineshaft cave spiders. Basic limb grave enemies here. We're, um... not even troubled by, so. Incredible animation someone made about Mikola that blew up recently. Recommend looking it up if you get the time. Um, sure, like, whisper it to me on Twitch. Alright, this fight's gonna go okay, probably. Get him, Yura. This fight's going to go okay as long as he doesn't inflict blood loss on me, ideally. There we go. <laughs> Just had to be sure. Just had to make sure he was distracted. Be a neat mechanic to be able to remove individual enchantments in Minecraft. Yeah, I, I don't know how they'd do that with like the GUIs that Minecraft has, though. Be like the enchanting table in reverse or something. Have to be off the horse to talk to him. Alright, maybe we will meet again. In, you know, like Ray Lucaria, for example. Uh, let's quickly while we're here.
got a first trident from the trial chamber, decided to enchant it, got impaling a loyalty, so you just need a book with channeling. Nice. Love a loyalty trident. Um Oh yeah, that's where we're going. Agil uh Dragon Burnt Ruins. Yeah, I think um, removing individual enchantments is not such a big ask, but then being able to reapply them to something else is, I think, a bit too OP with Minecraft's current system, but... Say a quick hello to the Twin Blades. Yeah, I think the whole... Um, the whole enchanting system probably needs a significant rework at some stage. I just don't know what they would do with it or when, really. Is that rat giving me a rune arc? Heck yeah! I love it when they do that. Spent an hour and three or four stacks of lapis and couldn't get it? Yeah, I think um, I often get channeling from villagers in the end. Because for a while it was like, because the trident was new, you got those enchantments all the time in the enchanting table, even when you didn't want them. But now I feel like the crossbow enchantments show up all the time for me. Dang it, why is he targeting that guy? <laughs> I mean, yeah, the other guy, the other guy wasn't even in my field of view at the time, but like, maybe consider for a second that this guy is the one I want to kill. <laughs> Thank you. I'm just gonna stay here in stealth mode until that guy backs off. And not get rock blasted by that guy. There is an incantation in the DLC that's like an, a more powerful version of Pest Threads, and I'm like, please. And poke. And he's gone. Excellent. Good, good, good. Smithing stone fives and fives. More golden runes, just in case we need those later. We'll go and trip the... trip the... We'll, we'll, we'll go and activate the grace here, but I don't want to respawn everything in there, so I'm just going to let it ride. Only use one health potion so far. I think we can make it through most of the rest of this as long as I land my attacks. Picture of playing Elden Ring and you only know about it now? I know! I've been playing this for a little bit because obviously the DLC hype was real for a little while there and I've started this ridiculous challenge where because I never use most of the weapons in this game when you originally encounter them, I wanted to play through with every weapon in alphabetical order, which is obviously ridiculous. But I personally really like the idea of it as a challenge because it eliminates all of the choice paralysis in, like, what weapon am I going to use next, you know? Like, if I wanted to try and play through with every weapon, like, without some kind of system like this... I would not be able to figure out what my build should be at any given time. But this way it's easy. Because it's just what's next on the list. Come back here with whatever that is. Nice, Pestglaive. Yeah, not looking forward to having to, like, farm weapons like that. <laughs> But yeah, I have um, 
a bunch of VODs of this up on my VODs channel now, so if you missed any of these runs, then please do uh, go and check that out. And we do have a seamless co-op playthrough on there as well, yeah, with Zloy XP, who will probably be returning for a seamless co-op playthrough at some stage. Like, I'm planning on doing one for the, um, the Astrologer's stuff, where I get every sorcery in the game, including the DLC. And that's mainly just so we can have an excuse for Zloy to experience most of the DLC. Because I know where the spells are, and they're mainly concentrated in a couple of places, but there's going to be some, some fun stuff that we can get elsewhere, and... Aside from that, I'm basically treating the DLC as a big pot of weapons that I get to dip into every now and again. No, you don't! Ah! Okay, he's gone down there now, that's fine. He can stay down there. As long as Pest Threads can't hit me here... Apparently it can. I hate it here. I hate it here. Oh, as long as I can just get to the shortcut, I'm fine. As long as he doesn't tag me on the way up this ladder. Okay, good. Whew. Kick. The real question is, do I feel like fighting Falling Star Beast with only one health flask? I still have my Wondrous Physic. And I haven't fully upgraded this weapon yet. Make that no health flasks. And now not even full health. Maybe I'll pass. Oh wait, there's one here. <laughs> we'll cleave it in twain. I'll see about that. We've got nine smithing stone fives, so we can... upgrade the sword to, like, plus 14 or something. It's currently plus five. I don't really fancy my chances, and I don't want to lose all these runes. But we have the shortcut here unlocked now, so I can get back here very easily if I want to. So I'm going to let myself out the back door. Step out into Aeonia Swamp and get back to the round table hold for some smithing. Yeah, this is the Gut Sword. This is a sword I've never used before, and everyone talks about it because of it being like a Berserk reference, and yeah, I decided to use it as a weapon on the way to the DLC weapon that we're acquiring for this playthrough. Always love to come back to Hugh when he thinks I've been dead the whole time. Dude, this thing is so expensive to level up, though. I'll get 6k from this. Back all, no matter. 
Okay, so yeah, we can get it to plus 13, plus 14, and then we run out of smithing stone fives, but that should be enough to beat the, uh, the falling star beast. Because we won't get to buy smithing stone fives and sixes until we do mountain tops. So plus fourteen it is. We'll go back here. We'll fight the beast. Hugh's faith in one character's abilities, I know. Well, he's the one who was literally told by God, make a weapon that can kill me, so... Okay, the pest haven't seen me, that's fine. Fine with that. Should be able to take out this guy in here. Emphasis on should. There we go. Damage is on another level now, which is good because we need it to be for this fight. I guess I did have a half heal from the Wondrous Physic, but still. I want to be able to use the Ash of War on this thing, so... Nice. Okay, now we charge. Ow. Hey, you can roll too. Got smushed. Oh. No, okay, yeah, it does it does a follow-up. <laughs> I thought it was just gonna leave me there, but I guess not. Okay. One more try. Again, that's my reliance on using the Ash of War and trying to get a stagger. <laughs> I was cleft. I was the one who was cleft. Also, I might have still been one-handing the entire time. I think I've Always need to check that when I come back from the round table hold. Excuse me. It was close. Yeah, no summons. No summons for this. At least not right now. Love being able to hit something I can't even see. Okay, this one's free. Dang it. I guess this one's free too. Ow. 
Missed my chance for that one. Man, why... This Ash just not connecting right now is the bane of my life. There we go. So now we've got Smithing Stone 7s and Somber 6s. We got the Somber Bell Bearing. That's looking better. <laughs> First try, yeah. Okay, uh, I think we're ready for Radon. I think if we can fight Falling Star Beast, we're probably ready for Radon. Gravity enemies are all the same anyway. So... I guess we'll ride on down from Church of the Plague. Sorry, Millicent, not today. Uh, where do we get down from here? Oh, yeah, we could do the, uh... The ridiculous, like, cheese strap time skip thing where you fall into the, uh, the arena. But that's not what I had intended to do. Can I get down from here? Is that something I can do? Oh yeah, I guess I can ride down this way, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, there is a way of getting into the Radan fight where you uh, you fall into the arena for the fight and the fight doesn't begin at that point, but then you can respawn at a stake of Marika and it skips the whole Castle Redmain setup thing. Number one thing to do in Kaled, leave Kaled always. Number two thing to do in Kaled, get Scarlet Rot, I guess. A lot of people have done it, it's very popular. Let's go and get the map steel from here, and then... Oh, the other thing we could do, if we wanted to get Lion's Claw now, we could go do Fort Gale. And get that. It's not too far away. It's like up here. Because the alternative is go to Castle Morn and get the Claymore and then remove the Ash of War from that and put it on something else. Now let's go and fight Radon with Stamp. Like, <laughs> I don't want to go past uh, the Rot Breath Dragon. And honestly, I think, I think the Stamp ability will last us for a while. We could also get Crag Blade from over here, which is another good option for both like damage and poise break. Free fan daggers. It's my favorite dance, the fan daggers. There's also a couple of talismans that we could get. But I think we'll be okay as is. I might level up one more time. Just so we don't bring a losable amount of runes into the Radan fight. Have to beat the entire game with just one weapon or change weapons during one playthrough. So the idea is because not all of the weapons are accessible immediately as we start the game, I have to get to the weapon... Ideally in as few steps as possible, like, it's not always going to be the most hyper-efficient thing ever. 
Um, but I do allow myself to use different weapons throughout the playthrough. Sometimes we can even end up dual wielding the main weapon with something else. Is the... I'm sorry, is Red Main not ready? Do I need to talk to Alexander again? Do I need to actually go to Shifra River? Weird. Radon not at home. Is it one of those things where I can I need to talk to Gideon or somebody first? Because like that teleporter should be on. <laughs> Maybe I do need to do Shifra River first. Because there's a few different things that trigger this, and I don't know what one I'm missing. Like, I've I've gone and spoken to Rani. She's sent Blythe to Shifra River to find Nokran. Um I haven't fought any of the other shard bearers yet, so it may be that Radan becomes accessible with minimal steps if you've already fought, like, Godric. But I don't know that for certain. Demi human ambush. Broken physics, thank you so much for the 42. Yeah, I'm glad you're uh, enjoying the bits and pieces here as well. Because, yeah, if we do this whole thing with Blythe, and then we get the letter of introduction for Selen. We haven't met Selen yet. Um, but then we learn about the whole Radan holding back the stars thing, and then I think the festival has to trigger at that point. But I think it may be triggers just through exploration if you uh, have already fought a shard bearer already. So we'll uh, speed run through Shifra River for now. When can I get on the horse? Thank you. Like, hello. Golden runes, golden runes. Do kissed Erba. No horses in the lift. You know the rules. Telling Blythe what you've learned from Selen triggers the festival. The non-Rani quest line is to activate any grace in Altus. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. That does make sense. And I guess we could go to Altus now, but that does move the story forward in a way that I wasn't quite expecting to right this minute. Then again, the plan for later this stream after we fight Radan is to go to Altus anyway, so...
Love that for us. Sword bro! Let's give him a... I just... Besides, leave this place if either of us... Okay, so now we go talk to Celavus. <laughs> I knew we'd have to talk to Celavus at some stage. Just putting it off. Blythe is the best. He is, um... Like, honestly, I really like a lot of the NPCs that they had in the DLC. I mean, Egon is obviously everyone's favorite, but I, um, I really like some of the other characters that are in there. Anne's back is really cool. Teolio is really interesting. Freya looks really cool as well. I do wish their quest lines were a little bit more involved, but Anne's back's one is fairly, fairly solid, I think. Yeah, Blythe and Alexander are the uh, the Egon and Anne's back of the uh, main game. Okay, so we're actually going to meet Selen, even though normally I don't. Well, normally I don't bother unless I'm doing a sorcery playthrough. Find Nefeli, find Selen, find this person, find that person. It's all Celavus is, is fetch quests. Mad Pumpkinhead should be fairly quick. Oh, didn't need that table anyway. Excuse me. Solar beam. Nice. Oh, that's the entrance. What? <laughs> I was like, wait a minute. Love a two second boss fight. It's funny that you can't come in here and just show a letter of introduction immediately. You have to say that you wanted to learn sorcery. Yeah, that was that was probably the quickest that fight's ever gone for me. Mostly because I'm overleveled for it, and uh, this sword is ridiculous on its own. I should probably be collecting the glove warts anyway, just because uh, sometimes I get to the point where I want to upgrade a summon for the later game, and I just don't have the uh, the upgrade materials yet. But like last time, I will uh, potentially have to go and do like the the other half of Rani's quest if we want to get all of the uh, the Ghost Glove Wart. It's a character in Dark Souls 3 where you need to meet a stat requirement before they will help you. Is it like a faith stat kind of situation, or is it like you need to be strong enough? Hmm. So Rani's faith that reminds me. There's a festival. It's a festival of comedy. Maybe it's just. A I'll be on my way. You'll come meet you with bread. The way ahead is please. All right. So now that should open up. Imagine selling saying you aren't smart enough to learn sorceries. Come back when you have more intelligence. Yeah, sure. I can see that. There we go. Finally the... 
portal is open. There we go. You need something like 12 intelligence? Yeah, makes sense. <laughs> it's it, it's not surprising to me, like, they write characters like Celavus, who I'm kind of actually surprised isn't like, I won't speak to you unless you have at least a baseline level of intelligence. He seems like one of those guys, you know? Gonna talk to Theralina for the gesture. Champions! Indeed, I by the bar. Well done, but be sure to get I always feel bad for interrupting Jaren, but he just yells a lot. Okay. Doing our thing, doing our thing. Gonna skip the Radan cutscene. It's now nighttime for some reason. That guy was talking until it became nighttime. I think we get another Smithing Stone 6 from here, don't we? We do! Wonderful. That's not enough for me to level up, though, right? Not so much. Just the one. Celavis wouldn't recognize you as having intelligence even if you did. It's true, yeah. Okay, not certain we'll be able to take Radan first try, but we will give it our best. I've at least got enough... I should probably have more um, crimson flasks at this stage, but we've got enough that I can refill the... Uh, the FP gauge if it gets low. It's weird fighting this Radan. You know? If you know, you know. Uh... Hey, man. Yep, makes sense. I feel like we're often just dealing damage to Leonard. <laughs> Yeah. Alright, that's phase two. Time to get on the horse. Where's he coming from this time? Oh, over there. Okay. Yep. <laughs> like a little bit of hitching going on. Ow. R.I.P. Theralina. Yep, <laughs> he just killed like all of us. <laughs> Amazing. And the rest of them are still going at it. Let's try again. Yeah, once he has the uh, the swords like. He kind of does crag blade halfway through this, I think. You get wrecked pretty easily. I also need to drink my wondrous physic at some stage during that. Probably when he does uh, the second phase transition. Dang it. I... For whatever reason, maybe it's because I'm coming into a Radan fight in 2024. Um, but I, I keep thinking there's going to be a cutscene right there that I have to skip. Okay, thought the uh, horse was going to 
save me from that one, but I guess not. So yeah, going in at a bit of a health disadvantage for once. Ow. Tragoth, Tragoth, Tragoth. There's Theralina. Okay, cool. We're all set. He's put the bow away. That's a good start. Ow. Thank you. Appreciate the heals. Out. Get him, Tragoth. Yeah. Okay, I got the stagger this time. All right. Now we'll take the flask. Get on the horse. Avoid the meteor. Oh, here he comes. Here he comes. Let's get a few of our friends back. Oh, Jaren as well, yeah. And my runes are over here. Let me get my runes. Where's he at right now? And Blythe is still going. Jaren has some sorceries. Let's see if there's any more summons that we can bring in. There's Alexander. There's Tragoth. That's Theralina again. Okay. I reckon we can go in now. Uh. Horse dodge, baby! Still almost killed me. Yeah, okay. That's that fight then. Didn't get the stagger. Wasn't quite fast enough, but... Not bad. Two tries. Looked a little bit dicey on the second one, but we did it. Alright, we'll skip that one. A red mark was made on the map. And... Get a little bit more leveling up. What's good, Blythe? Ah, good. What a sick way to fight, eh? The Same. Glory of the clan. <laughs> Falling star. I can't fathom even delivering the path is not Nokla. Let's meet where the we'll take up us. Okay, so we've taken out Radan. Ah, well, I one hit was after that, and as such, <sighs> as luck. If I can, and you know, who could expect? <laughs> Just you wait. <laughs> Okay, so now uh, Alexander is moving on as well. See you later, Ginger. Have a good one. Let's throw a few more points into Endurance. Maybe one more into Strength. And we need to start leveling Arcane at some stage, so I guess it may as well be now. We need 19 Arcane to wield the sword that we're aiming for. So, from here, we don't need to go back and get Anything done at Redmain? We should head to the round table hold so that we can talk to the two fingers. Or rather talk to Enya. I refuse to look at the two fingers. 
become a let down. So I don't really want either of these for this build. I might go with Radan's armor once we have a bit more equip load available. But I don't have the runes for it right now. The runes, however, are something we are about to go and get. After the DLC, this fight felt nostalgic. I know, right? It's funny how much of the moveset is actually kind of similar. But, you know, it happens on a horse and the battlefield is so different. And I think a lot of people do that fight the way I just did that fight, which is by summoning basically everybody and hoping that they do a lot of the work. So... The, uh, the 1v1... Is, is pretty rough. So here's Vare. Just, you know, being a normal guy. You claim what... Uh -huh. My doubt. The words are truly... I believe even words. That's the part. Oh, I... I mean, give it a try. And if it... I've high... All right, cool. So now we'll head off to the Grand Dectus Bridge. And we got the Ray Lucaria Crystal Key. So we can get through here. We'll do Yura's invasion while we're here, and then we'll head off towards the Dectus Lift. We should be right on time, I think. Always love the view of four belfries. I bring it up every time we go this way, but it's true. It's just very good. Just going to bypass this for a second so that we can get the golden seed. I think we're on three seeds per flask now. I could be wrong, but I think we are. So that might be number two of three or something. Plenty of those when we get to Altus anyway, so. Right, let's quickly do this. Yeah, smacked by a random boss and then getting a sword out of the deal. That's just Elden Ring. That's just the way the game is. Even the final boss of the DLC is basically like, you get smacked around for a while and when you finally beat it, it's like, congrats, now have a sword. Well, this guy. This is what I thought the Nereus fight was going to be, is the guy rolling from my attacks constantly. Oh, wow. That looked like it hurt. Oh, that also looked like it hurt, to be fair. How's this the longest sword in the world, and yet somehow I keep missing? <laughs> there we go. It's a three shot, but he's making it difficult for me. Okay. Now we get to talk to Yura. All right, cool. I think that's all done. So now we hit the seal and we head back to Bellum Church. And then the Dectus left. Genuinely didn't realize that this took you anywhere other than back to Academy Gate Town. So imagine my surprise. When I discovered there was a nice easy way to get to Bellum Church. Is Twitch uh, 
technical banning you from chat. <laughs> Is that what's happening? Twitch was having some issues. Yeah. Welcome to average day on Twitch, I guess. Alright, so we'll grab this. We'll grab this. I might as well go and fight Vike now, because there's a grace up at the church, I think. And if not, then there's one just outside of um, Frenzy Flame Village. And we're going to need to go and get the Maiden stuff done anyway, so... Might as well get as many graces as we can around there. Excuse me. I can never remember exactly what the items are here. They always look more important. Still remember when 99% of streamers and viewers couldn't connect to a channel? Yeah. I finally ended up uh, having to unfortunately deal with the new Twitch mobile app the other day. It like force upgraded on I forget which one, like either my iPad or my phone. Both of which I use to watch Twitch fairly occasionally. A lot of the time when I'm watching Twitch, I'm on my laptop, but... The new Twitch mobile app is... Not my favourite. It's like the main good thing about it was the home screen. And then they just decided, nope, you don't have a home screen anymore, you go straight into a stream. All the discoverability features look different. All the browse features look different. And you just gotta live with that now. I think, you know, as usual, we get used to change, so... I imagine after a while we will probably, you know, deal, but... In the meantime, it is... Such a pain. Speaking of pain... Experiencing some of that right now. Madness. Frenzy Flaming Tower. Yeah, thanks. Good thing you have auto-updates off. So do I. But I think it just did it anyway. I think it might have just happened when I upgraded my, like, I let my iOS upgrade or something. quite enough of that. We'll be back here for the actual incantations at some stage. A couple of weapons from now. I think it's three weapons. We've got this. The... We've got Ansbach's bow, Antspur rapier, and then we've got the, um, the anvil hammer. Oh, we do have three golden seats. Amazing. And yeah, I want the Anvil Hammer run to be a Frenzy Flame run. Only good part is seeing what the stream is playing before clicking. Yeah, I guess. There's still that. Oh. Oh, we got that guy good. Do you see that? Flung him into the air. Missed the name of this character. What is it? Amogus. Because Ancient Meteoric All Greatsword AMOG. Couldn't resist. 
it's time to play Throw Vike. I mistimed that somewhat. We still got to play throw bike though. Nope. Also nope. Sick. GG. Yeah, here we go. Wait there. Be back for you in a second. Perfect 10 out of 10 name, yeah. We do alright here. We do alright. I honestly think my favourite way of getting to the Altus Plateau is still... taking the uh, Magma Worm route and coming up through the... Uh, like area where all of the carriages and stuff are. Erd Tree Gazing Hill. Avoid the dragon. That whole chestnut. The names are one of my favorite things about this challenge. Yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to uh, the next few. The next few I have picked out are very good. The one I've already talked about on stream is uh, when we do the Anvil Hammer. My, it, it's going to be like a an evil character run. Like I'm planning on making all of the bad decisions you can make. Like, um, I mean, we just got the flask that Celavis wants to give to Nefeli, and obviously Celavis is such a obviously bad news character that I feel like nobody ever does. But I feel like that's the run on which I'm actually going to do that. Um, I want to kill some NPCs. I'm probably not going to kill the Turtle Pope because it's just too sad and even I'm not that heartless. But I want to do a, fl a frenzied flame run, focus on like madness incantations, do the bad ending, that kind of stuff. Weird to see me not play Minecraft. I know, right? I uh, play a variety of things that aren't Minecraft. And I've done some of them on stream recently, but uh, it is actually super fun to uh, to be playing Elden Ring. Yeah, not even the most evil person in the world could kill the Turtle Pope. Some people have. And the cool thing about the Turtle Pope in general is that, like, a lot of the other NPCs, if you attack them, then they just automatically become hostile to you every time you visit. You have to do the absolution thing at the Church of Vows to repair your relationship with them. Obviously, if you kill them, they don't come back. The Turtle Pope never attacks you, and no matter how much you attack him, he always, like, forgives you and just, like... He cannot have an adversarial relationship with the player. And I think that's just too good and pure to... to sully that, you know? He is one of the best characters in the game. There's Gold Mask. Uh, oh yeah, this is the one where we need to head under the bridge, isn't it? I remember. Ah oh, yes, I remember it well. Oh, while we're here, let's go... Um Let's go get some more Sacred Tears. Let's do this in a really different order to how I normally do it. I also never go into Lanedale through that door. Mama Melissa, thank you so much for the raid. Welcome in. Hello, friends. Oh, the cows are herding over. <laughs> Love that. Welcome in, folks. 
Good to see you. Hope you're doing well. Hope you had a good stream. What were you up to today? Let me uh, let me know. Tell me the deets. We played some fantasy Minecraft SMP earlier. We are currently continuing a challenge I'm doing in Elden Ring. When the DLC came out, I decided to replay the game a whole bunch of times, and I'm currently trying to beat the game with every weapon in alphabetical order, which is going to take a very long time. But we're enjoying the ride. You got inspired and made a skin for Revenant Picks. Tag me on Twitter. Awesome. Looking forward to seeing that. I have been wondering for uh, a little while since we, like, heard about this SMP that Sausage was putting together. I am kind of curious what I could do for a skin, so uh, I may be taking a bit of inspiration from uh, any ideas that the community has. I think there's going to be a lot of armor in the um, in the mod pack anyway that's probably going to show up over your skin. But I kind of want to see, like, if we can put together something fun anyway, you know? There's in Disney Dreamlight Valley today, working on the current event they have, then Tears of the Kingdom. Nice. I've still not played Tears of the Kingdom. I played Breath of the Wild, and I love that game, but I just haven't been on the Switch much lately. All right, we got this. Now, can you get to... I guess it's kind of over there. I'm not sure if you can really hop down that way from here to get to um, the other church. Whoop! Speaking of hopping down, let's not do that right there. Is there, like, some handy stones that we can, like, hop between or anything? Because that's going to kill me if I fall down that way. I really don't want to fight the dragon. Grab a couple of the runes from here, because why not? And we probably don't want to tangle with the uh, the assassin here either, so. There's some Breath of the Wild stuff on the fancy SMP. That was, that was what the goddess statue was? I see. Yeah, I didn't recognize it at first glance, but that's me not having played Breath of the Wild in a long time, more than any kind of... Uh, inaccurate portrayal. So we need to get down there, right? No, no we don't. We need to get down here. I guess we can just warp there. We might as well. Played Tears for a solid eight-ish hours. Just got to the other side of the intro part in the game. Only played an hour today. Love how long the game is. Yeah. With uh, Breath of the Wild, I think I spent maybe 120 hours total in that game, and it's so good. Obviously, I didn't do 100% of what you can do, but I think I did, I did like, most if not all of the shrines and whatnot. And uh, Elden Ring was like that. I spent uh, 130 hours on my first Elden Ring playthrough, my first character. And I've obviously spent more like 600 plus hours in the game overall now, which is a lot of time, but it's time spent doing something you like. Which is always worth it, in my opinion. Okay, so are we good enough to fight Eleonora? That's the real question. Eleonora. It seems I am no match for you, but I've learned a thing or two myself. You see, I've sliced the finger off. Please do not stain the immaculacy of your sword. Speaking of your sword, though. Where is she? Where is she? Where is she? There she is. I knew it was one of the pillars. Yeah! Good opener. Forgot that that was Flame Breath. I thought it was just Dragon Maw. No drinks for you. Only fighting.
Oh, we had a faint attack there. And that's Grail's Roar, so that's not going to do much. Peace. Alright, that's what we came here for. Now, back here. Back across the divide. Watch a couple of people play Elden Ring looks fun. Gonna lurk a bit after stream self-care. Of course, of course, go get whatever you need to go get. Have some food, some water. Just take care of yourself. No worries. Played uh, Breath of the Wild Master Mode. My brother said I was casually destroying the strongest type of Lionel while chatting away. Yeah, it's uh, another one of those games that the mastery of it is really fun. Like when you get some of the the timings down and everything, like it can be so satisfying to play stuff like Breath of the Wild. Alright, I'll grab this Grace because we'll probably come back here later if we go into Mount Gelmir for anything. But our first stop is going to be Magnus the Beast Claw. I also need to... Yeah, I need to get a bow. <laughs> I need to buy a bow from something, somewhere, someone. Gotcha. I think I'll probably end up doing the um, Abandoned Cave in Kaelid, so I'll probably just get the Serpent Bow from there anyway. But I don't know what my stats have to be like to use it. I'm pretty sure it's an Arcane stat, so we might be okay. See you later, Catman. Have a good one. Enjoy your day. both got our abilities going. See, that's the uh, ability that I wanted earlier. This guy's cleaning me up. almost rough. That was rough. Yep. Mm-hmm. We can respawn at this one. It's fine. I think we only have to fail this a few times before he'll just, like, progress the quest, the quest anyway. And I think I can take him, but it's, it's a little rough. Not as rough as it was for bow only, though. <laughs> Excuse me, gents. Just gonna pass you by, not to worry, don't mind me. I'm one of those Caden Warlord guys that you like to hang out with from time to time. Cool. Maybe we don't bother with the uh, mixed physic this time because he just runs at me before I'm spawned in. Maybe I just, just go for this. He won the jump toss. Trying to get him before he tries to heal. Nice. Good thing he doesn't have Savage Lion's Claw. That's, uh... A little more difficult to handle. <laughs> You've got red on you a little bit. Always just a little bit.
Just going to quickly go to the round table hold because otherwise the dogs aggro on me and I can't use the map. There we go. And now back to Vare. Oh, good old Vare. Doesn't even show up as being there, but he's there. I am very certain he is there. I am very certain. G the B, thank you for gifting a sub. Yes, briefly we were red Amogus. Okay, doing the thing, doing the thing, and anyone's maiden will do. So that's why we're going to Church of Inhibition. And when we get all of the uh, Finger Maiden stuff, we also get the Lord of Blood's favor. Then we go back to Vare. <laughs> I'm trying to think if there was something else we wanted to do before we go to Mogwin Palace, but I don't think there is. Oh yeah, get a bow. That was it. I remember things I said half an hour ago. Uh, we don't need to worry too much about the Great Rune. I can always go and get that another time. Ah, my new computer. And with this, a knight now. This no do the thing with the finger, blah, blah, blah. Oh, good heavens. Clench your teeth or something. <laughs> Never forget it is what <laughs> you have. Oh. I like how at that point you could just walk away and then like... But you mustn't use it. Nothing happens. You mustn't use it just yet, and then you just run away. <laughs> use it, of course. Okay, gonna quickly do the thing. Get the map, get the grace. Should also buy some arrows, but then... I might already have acquired some from somewhere. Where would they be in, like, ammunition? Yeah, I've got some arrows. And that will get you near infinite budget for more arrows. This guy's the worst? Oh yeah, no, he's he's a bad dude. Absolutely no doubt about that. He is the baddest of dudes. Don't worry about that. Ignore that. Ignore everything that's happening behind me. Oh, we've got a few extra runes for the budget there, too. That guy has glowing eyes. Unfortunately, we won't be able to kill him. At least not right away. Alright, that's that. Now we go and do... Oh, flasks. Quickly get that taken care of. We're plus nine already. That's pretty good. So we'll go to... Where is the spot in Caled? I guess here is probably closest. Caleb Ruins. Got to go and fight some clean rot knights. So 
See, that's the spot where you hop across to get to Dragon Barrow. So my, my overall review of the DLC has to take into account the fact that there are some places that are really frustrating to get to because there's only one way to get to them, where I feel like in the base Elden Ring, like where we're at right now, taking Dragon Barrow as an example, there are a ton of different ways to get to Dragon Barrow. Like, you can go on foot. There are a couple of different ways you can teleport there, like... NPCs will tell you to go and get that stuff. Like, it's more signposted, right? Whereas I feel like there's a couple of spots in the DLC where they look really cool from a distance and they look really cool on the map and all I wanted was to go to them, but, like, there's only one very specific way you can go to get to some of them. And it just, like, that frustrates me when the base game is so good about exploration that way. Of course, that wasn't the best start to this area. <laughs> but luckily my runes are like right there next to the entrance. So we'll go again. There we go, better. Good. Oh yeah, I forgot that I might need a lantern for some of this, but, you know. We'll deal for the moment. There it is. Alright. And now we kill this guy. And then... I guess we better press on. Can't see much of what's going on in here, but don't worry about it. As long as we don't get Scarlet Rot, it's fine. Poison is bad, but it's not the worst thing that can happen to me. Okay, we're here. Hopefully this should not take long, but these guys can be a bit of a pain. Cool and good. Fancy. We'll probably swap that for this for now. We'll get rid of some of these. Oh, excuse me. And then we'll equip the Serpent Bow. I can use it because I have 11 Arcane. That's good. So yeah, now we have a bow. Now we can go back to Kale and buy some arrows. Even though Serpent Arrows are ideal for use with this bow, it's not required. The way you just fling these enemies into the air looks so fun and satisfying, yes. The Upward Cut ability is really fun. Alright, we buy the maximum amount of arrows. And it doesn't even cost all of our runes. I'm actually kind of surprised how little that cost. But then we go here, and then we farm bird. And everything is good again. Bird farming time, baby! We can use the dwelling arrows. I'm not that fussed about the dealing magic damage the first time around. I also have one gold pickled foul foot, 
so we can farm runes slightly more effectively that way. They want to return to a more linear progression for the DLC. There are multiple ways to get to some DLC areas, but they're much more hidden. Yeah, the um, the main one I have an issue with is like the entire southeast region. Like um, Jagged Peak and stuff. Basically just being like one fairly easily missable tunnel. Like I walked down that path past Egon a decent amount of times. I never got the invasion. I never got anything to indicate that I was going the right way, and I just missed the cave entrance. And I spent the entire time being like, okay, I found the blue area. How do I get to the red area? Like, there's got to be a way up from the blue area to the red area. And, like, there just never was. What minimum level you consider to fight Moog? Honestly, I don't know, because I don't fight Moog all that often. I've only ever fought him on a couple of, like, um all bosses runs that I've done. And so it really depends on your strategy, but honestly, if you're just looking to get to the DLC early, there is a really great YouTube video. In fact, there must be like a few different YouTube video guides on how to get there early with Bloodhound's Fang. And I think it does involve going to Lanedell and getting the Shackle, but you can basically stunlock Moog at a certain point, like, you're using the Bloodhound skill, you're staggering him, you're using the Shackle at specific moments, and he just never gets a hit in on you. And I think the level is still relatively low, it's like 50-something, if that. And yeah, the problem with, um, with Jagged Peak being hidden behind that, for me, is that it's such a cool area, and contains not only one of my favorite bosses of the DLC, but also my absolute favorite NPC dialogue of the whole DLC. And I was so satisfied when I got there, but still really annoyed that I had to look up how to get there. The cave is so hidden, dude. I also went to Jagged Peak instead of exploring the red area at all, and then um, one of the NPCs was just, like, dead when I got there. <laughs> like, I, I, never, I never found out what her deal was until I watched somebody else play, and they had the chat helping them do stuff in order, and they went there first. And so there's, like, a priestess character there that I was like, who is this? Oh, the corpse that I picked up that item from. <laughs> Yeah, a simple line from Egon to be like, find the cave, kill the dragon. I've also seen so many people assume that the invasion you get from the the ancient dragon or whatever is 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 the character he's talking about, is Bale. And I was like, I guess I'll find out who that is eventually. And then I went to the States and all of my like YouTube feed was like full of Bail the Dread, Bail the Dread, and I was like, really? Like, there's this whole massive dragon fight that I haven't done yet? With apparently some very good NPC dialogue. Very satisfying to get there, though. So this is what we'll be doing for the rest of the stream, I'm pretty sure. Because I um, will probably be wrapping up in the next, I'll say, 10 minutes or so. But we're going to farm a few more birds. We're going to get to, what are we at like now, 51? I want to get to probably like 125-ish. My usual approach to this is like, spend at least half of the maximum amount of arrows, if you get like 300 or so. Or like aim for a specific rune amount or something.
but in this case we'll need a bunch more vigor, a bunch more strength. Actually, honestly, I might focus on endurance a little bit, but we need to make sure that we get 19 arcane in the build somewhere. Because once we've fought Moog, we can go straight to the DLC, we can go straight to get the weapon, and then we can come back to the base game and continue <laughs> like nothing had ever happened. <laughs> KFC Kaled fried chicken. This is Mogwin Palace fried chicken. Obviously at this point we could also go and get a couple of other things that would help us with the Moog fight. Like we could go to... Uh Lane Dell and get the extra golden seeds. We can't get into Lane Dell yet without fighting another shard bearer, so if we need to, we can fight Godric or Renala, and then we can just go and get Mogus Shackle. But following that, we just need to do the fight. A lot of Mogus attacks are relatively slow feeling, I think. As long as you know what they are. So, um, I think the greatsword should be fine. Using anything that's not like a full strength weapon, I might need to respec, but... I missed the bird, I hit the branch. There we go. Kaled fried chicken, uh, fried chicken is those uh, giant birds that aren't all like warty like these ones, right? <laughs> the, the prawn shack. Bubba gumps. Bubba boggets. Shrimp company. I'm on the lookout for the ones that have got glowing eyes. Because if we see one of those, I think I have another gold pickled foul foot. I think I picked one up maybe in Shifra River or somewhere. On the way through something, anyway. Is that one? Can't tell. Don't think so. No. Glowing eyes means you get five times as many runes, so... With the extra foul foot, that's like 80k, I think. Oh, I've got leftover curry after this. Oh, yes. Very much looking forward to leftover curry. Been resisting eating it for lunch. <laughs> 
I also need to catch up on a couple of the Olympic events. I want to rewatch the uh, the skateboarding. I think I sat down too early on that one. Yeah, because apparently we got bronze in the skateboarding, and it's been really fun seeing that at the Olympics. Yeah, Sky Brown. I heard she was uh, bronze at the Tokyo Olympics as well, which we didn't really watch a whole lot of. And yeah, yeah, I heard about the uh, the shoulder dislocation on the commentary. That's uh, amazing that people can do stuff like that and then be like ready to compete again within a week. <laughs> Obviously, there's people who get injured at the games and are still like, yeah, sure, go for it. It's like how uh, Djokovic won Olympic gold in the tennis and uh, was still sort of in the recovery period after a knee surgery that happened at the French Open. So he came back to the same place where he'd had to, like, go and have knee surgery immediately afterwards and uh, came back and won Olympic gold. Which is pretty intense. Especially at his, uh... His age. There's a Titanic survivor who was pulled out of the sea later that year, won the US Open. That's... that's wild. That's amazing. It's funny how, like... A lot of us are... cautious about doing anything risky because obviously you don't want to get hurt. You don't want to have the inconvenience or the medical bills or whatever it is to deal with like injury and stuff but like the human body is a miracle when it comes to that stuff. It's amazing in its capacity to heal but is also incredibly fragile at the same time. Looked down at my phone one day and hurt my neck. Yeah, I was walking down the stairs the other day and, like, looked to one side too quickly and my neck has hurt for, like, two days. And yet there are people with a dislocated shoulder coming back and winning bronze at the Olympic skateboarding event, you know? Like, who am I? The answer to that is not an athlete. Although the uh, ironic thing about the Olympics is that it's made me want to go and do more, like, active stuff. I want to go and ride my bike more, get on the rowing machine more, play more sports, you know, go and do a bit of casual tennis or whatever. But then I want to do that once the Olympics is done. And then once the Olympics is done, I don't feel the motivation anymore because I'm not watching inspiring stuff constantly. <laughs> so it's it's a weird, a weird balance. That's why self-motivation is a good thing. Oh yeah, no, the Paralympics is amazing too, right? Simone Biles competed the entire time after seemingly pulling something in her calf during qualifiers and she got three golds and a silver, yeah. Pains me that the sword clips into the ground. I couldn't play with this kind of weapon. Oh, yeah, no, I've, I've just seen that. I've just seen that and it's it's awful. Hopefully our goal weapon for this playthrough will uh, serve us a little better in that respect. It's fine when you're, like, running around... You can imagine it as, like, the tip of the sword scraping against the ground or something, but... Yeah, rest of the time, not so much, huh?
Haven't seen any glowing eyes yet, but I think maybe we've got one or two that I just didn't clock at the time. Yeah, I, d I did like the uh, the photo of Simone Biles and the other US gymnast whose name I forget at the moment. Um, both like bowing to the gymnast who won gold. That's really funny. So close. So close to a million. So close. Jordan Childs. Yeah, there you go. Thank you. Right. We're at a million. We've got... Enough to put 19 into Arcane. We'll put... Up to 25 Strength. Oh, 25 Endurance. We'll put 40 Vigor and 45 Strength. And now we're up to 86. Now my health bar is looking healthy. So is my stamina bar, if it comes to that. We've still got... About 600 or so arrows. That's where we're going to leave it for today. I will do a bit more leveling up in between streams. Because it's just going to be more of this, which is... I thought for a second I saw some glowing. <laughs> Maybe not. Nope. Okay, we'll, uh, we'll call it there. And we'll be back probably on Thursday for a little bit more of this. But folks, thank you so much for joining me. As usual, we're going to raid somebody else, even though we raided Martin earlier. We'll see who else is out here streaming a variety of things. Um, hmm. Who can we send you folks off to tonight? Let's go raid... Jambo today. Jambo is playing Baldur's Gate 3. So, spoilers for Baldur's Gate 3, but it looks like she's still pretty early from what I understand. I haven't really seen much of it, but I've seen, like, a small amount of playthrough. So we'll go say hi to Jambo. You can use your Pixel High Beamers and the hashtag Pixel Raid to show some love. I'll be back on Thursday for another stream, unless we do something tomorrow. I'm not sure what's going to happen tomorrow, so we will see. All right. Catch you folks later. Have a good one. Take care. Bye for now.